I don't care who's on the line. This is an emergency. Tell the Minister of Finance to get off the line. What? Very well, very well. But ring me back the instant you get through to Athens. Damn, damn, damn. My goodness, Pierre, what is it? A telegram from Dr. Sloan in the United States. The American team has been booked on a ship that won't reach Athens until the games are nearly over. Nearly over? Their travel agent, it appears, arranged for them to arrive on April 9th, thinking the games didn't start until the 17th. The 17th? But that's absurd. For two years now, the whole world has known that they were to begin on the feast. Ah, but this was a particularly conscientious uh, travel agent, my dear. Knowing that the Greeks still go by the old uh, Julian calendar, which is 12 days behind ours, he cleverly decided that April 5th in Athens meant the Greek date, not ours. Accordingly, he added 12 days and came up incorrectly with the 17th as the actual starting date. He then made the bookings on that assumption, the idiot. Still, I don't see the problem, dear. Why can't Dr. Sloan simply book another space on another ship, one that arrives in time? Because the error wasn't discovered until they'd already sailed. Oh, Pierre, no. Oh, Pierre, yes. They are on the high seas at this very moment. But what will you do? What can we do? They are completely incommunicado until they reach their first port of call which is uh, Gibraltar. Well, perhaps there you can transfer them to another ship, a faster ship. At this moment, that is our only hope. Sloan is trying to work out something. Pray God he succeeds. Without the American team, the first Olympics of modern times is going to be the biggest disaster of all time. Athens. Hello? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Dr. Sloan. There is no other ship that can get them to Athens on time. Well, I'm afraid it's hopeless. Not quite hopeless, perhaps. I think I have a solution. But you just said that there now, was I said no we can't way. get them there any faster by sea, but we might overland. Look here. They're scheduled to sail from Gibraltar on Monday, arriving in Naples on Wednesday. Now, while the ship lays over in Naples for two days, then sails slowly around the boot of Italy and the Greek Peloponnesus to arrive in Athens a week later, the boys could disembark in Naples and take the train across Italy to Brindisi. Brindisi? There's a steamer from Brindisi to Piraeus that arrives on Sunday morning. From there, it's only a short hop to Athens. The boys would arrive only a few hours before the games. And they'd be terribly exhausted with no time to recuperate. But they'd be there, Mary. They would be in Athens. There is one possible hitch, however. I'm afraid the Italian trains are notoriously unreliable. Even if theirs were on time, the boys would have less than two hours to make the connection with the steamer to Greece. On the other hand, if it should be late... When does the next ferry sail? 
I'm afraid there's only one a week. Which means they'd arrive in Athens after the games are over. I realize it's a long shot, Dr. Sloan, but I think it's worth the gamble. I don't think we have any choice. I'll cable Gibraltar at once. Ironic, isn't it? The boys have no idea of their predicament. There they are, somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, oblivious to it all. Perhaps it's just as well. At least this way they can relax and get some rest before. I think I'm gonna die. Amy, you really don't like to see, do you? I've only been on two boat rides, Mr. Graham. The first was that joyous crossing from Ireland. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. All of us stuck down in steerage, sick as dogs. It was worth it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. If you could have seen the look on me mother's face when she got her first glimpse of that statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, you'd know what I mean. That's why I got to win in Athens. Because it would have meant so much to her. And I'm going to win, too. Oh, if I don't die before I get there. Oh, no. You see that bucket right there? Quicker, Mr. Graham, the bucket. Thanks. You're on your own, lad. Oh. oh. Isn't anybody hungry? Excuse me. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> if he's not going to eat it, would you pass this dessert down, please? Oh, how can you, Guardy? <laughs> I never get seasick. I love the sea. But how can you eat so much? I mean, for a swimmer, aren't you afraid you'll sink? Oh, my father says a swimmer needs a lot of energy, so he has to eat plenty of food, especially sweets. You know, like whipped cream, meringue, custard. Pies, puddings, cream cakes, eclairs, fudge, donuts, Boston cream pie, chocolate chip cookies. It's all mind over matter, you know. Just have to concentrate on something else. Gardner, I'm speechless. Did you know that the only contest in the first Olympics, I mean the very first, 3,000 years ago, was a foot race? Mm-mm. 100 meters. A fellow by the name of Caribus won it, so they named the first Olympiad after him. The Caribus Olympiad. What's an Olympiad? The four-year period between games. Apparently, it became a tradition, naming the next Olympiad after the winner of the 100-meter race. I wonder if they're going to carry on that tradition. Why? I'm running the 100 meter race. I, I kind of like the sound of it. The sound of what? The Burke Olympiad. What? Go to sleep. I was just thinking out loud. Some fruit for you and the boys. Catch. It's not bad, boys. Like it? Yeah, let's just hope you can hurdle as well as you can juggle. Certainly, gentlemen. What would you like? The standard start? Anytime you're ready, Tyler. Push on the right here? On the line. Okay. Take your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> You know, there ought to be a better way for them to start off. I see what you mean. Got any ideas? Let's put on our thinking caps. 11, 12. Too vast, trunkless legs. Stop standing, dance. 
Oh. Do you talk to yourself a lot? I talk. <laughs> oh, I recite poetry. I always do. The meter helps me keep the pace. <laughs> Listen, my children, you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th, the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is still alive who remembers that famous day and year That's it. of the midnight ride, ride of Paul Revere. Takes all the work out of it. <laughs> Listen, think... my children, and you shall hear. Ideally, what they need is a catapult. Ideally. Paul! On the other hand, I doubt that the Olympics Committee would allow any sort of mechanical aids. I was speaking figuratively, Sumner. Pull! I got you. Pull! Like a good push. Exactly. Something to help him get up ahead of steam and fast. Pull two! A way to shove off is what we're looking for. Pull two! Trouble is, there's nothing to shove against. Only the turf. That's under them, not behind. Old trouble of the world today, Sumner. It's upside down. Pull four. That all depends on the way you look at it, John. Pull four. More bonbons, Guardy? Don't you think you ought to be getting some exercise? It's not the same for swimmers, Mr. Graham. Too much exercise tightens the muscles. A swimmer needs to be loose and relaxed. At least, that's what my father said. And he ought to know. I sure hope your father knows best. Tem says we'll dock in Gibraltar right on schedule. Won't be soon enough for me, I'll tell you that. Oh, we're going to be the guests of the British garrison there. They're going to let us practice on their parade ground for a day. Only one day? I'm going to need more time than that. Well, don't forget, once we get to Athens, we got a whole week to get the team in shape. And you're going to be in shape. Says who? Says me, Connolly. Man's an optimist. It's getting to be a bad habit with you, Connolly. Would you like to take a swim, Blake? Oh, yeah? yeah. Come, on, come, on, come 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 on. What have you got against Connolly? I just don't happen to appreciate his cocky attitude, for one. He's too arrogant for my taste. Well, right. That's what he said about you. What? I thought we were supposed to be a team. That is the information as I've received it. If you ask me, this team's been jinxed from the start. Might as well just turn around and go back home, guys. I can understand how you gentlemen must feel. But Colonel Waverly and I have been looking over Dr. Sloan's alternate route. For what it's worth, I think we should give it a try. Provided the Italian railroad is running on time for a change. Yeah. And the steamer to Greece doesn't leave Brindisi before we get there. That's right. Exactly. Hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about? We have no choice but to try. Now, I can't speak for the rest of you. But I'm going to Athens. All right, let's have a show of hands. Who's for giving it a try? Good. Then let's get out there and get in some practice while we can. Let's go, let's go! <laughs> Gentlemen, let's get to our starting position. Sumner, if you give me the pistol on the start. Right. John, a clocking at the finish. And Curtis, try your best. Uh, let's get him in line now. Where's the other one? There it is. Back a bit. That's right. Excuse me. All right, gentlemen, take your starting places, please. Ready? 
set. Go, 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 go! Seconds. I could do better. I know I can. If I could just get off fast. What do you mean? We can't get into our running fast enough. I yes. understand. Well, we do. We've been studying your problem, and what you need is a hammer to push yourself off faster. Isn't that right, John? Right, John, Sumner. A what? A hammer. Like this. to Ambassador Edgerton. Welcome to Athens. Thank you, Mr. Well, I suppose you'd like to meet the rest of the English team. Yeah. Two weeks already. You always strut about like that? Constantly, even on the streets and in restaurants. Takes all sorts, huh? I'm afraid we're in no position to cast the first stone. We've got one of our own. Uh, uh, Mr. Flack, this is Grantley Goulding. He's sort of acting as captain of the English team. Goulding? Well, you're a skinny little runt, aren't you? Still, you'll doubtless do better than this scruffy lot. Makes no difference to me, though. I'm going to win all the medals here. Is that so? See these? I'm the real champion. Very impressive. What about the Americans? Don't they worry? Why should the Americans worry anybody? They're scarcely more than novices. Besides, haven't you heard? They're not getting here till it's nearly over. The typical of the Colonials. Always one step behind. <laughs> yes, well, I shouldn't bet on it, Mr. Goulding. We understand they might make it yet. <laughs> is the trouble this time? Rota. Rota. E rota. It's broken. E guasto. Si. Can you fix it? Can you fix it? Non so. How long will it take? Non so. How long? How many minutes will it take? Non so. Another hour? That's what they say. We'll never get to Brindisi in time. They keep assuring me we will. Oh, they just don't want to see 14 grown men break down and cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not waiting around here. Anybody for a stretch? Yeah. 
Maybe we can get a decent meal in town. Yeah. Okay, but don't go too far. The minute you're in the train, we'll still get back here on the double. Yes, sir. Hey, coming, Blake? Oh, uh, no, it's too hot. I'm gonna have to lay down or something. See you skip. Yeah, Billy. <sighs> Oh, boy. That did the trick. Let James Connolly take care of this. You understand the lingo here. My pleasure. Senor, what do we have here? Quanto es por la beer? Vente Take a look at this. Grazie. Huh? That's uh, very nice. Um, why don't you go ask him how much it is? You don't think I can? Watch this. I've been studying. <laughs> Scusa, signore. Ah, le parla italiano. Bene, bene. Che voglia? Um, quanto costa questo uh, capello? Ah, il capello. Sì. Il cappello costa 30 lire, signore. 30 lire. How much? 30 lire. You think I should get it? Well, it's only 50 cents. Why not? Cheap at half the price. Yes, yes, but I think you have to bargain with these people. Oh. Uh, grazie, signore. Me è troppo caro. Sono studente. Ah, studente? Sì. E per studente costa 20 lire. 20 lire. It says 20, what do you think? Grab it. Yeah. Grazie, signore. Grazie mille. Lei è un cornutto magnifico. Come? Lei è un cornutto magnifico. Io? It's supposed to be a conference. No, he doesn't say it. I told you your money. You have, you have your money in full. Oh. I paid you this. Now I have to buy the place. I paid you because I'm running out of here. What did I say? It's so touchy. Oh, Madonna mia! Tyler! Never mind the hello, just keep walking fast. What's wrong? There's a gentleman with a gun in there who's taken exception to something Garrett said. A gun? What did Garrett say? I called him a cornuto magnifico. Blake said that if you want to make a big impression with an Italian, you call him a cornuto magnifico. You idiot, you called him a cuckold. You said his wife sleeps with other men. Oh, no, I, th I thought it was something nice. Yeah, if uh, you're one of the other men, Gary, it's, uh... Gradini! <laughs> Which way's the station? <laughs> Wait, I don't think he's coming. Don't around me, do they? That's our train. Go on this way. Are you sure? Yes. Ah! What's up? Choo-choo, my ticket. Sorry, old fella. 
I got a very important date in Athens. <laughs> not broken, Skip. But I gotta tell you, I don't think you're gonna run on that. Nothing's gonna stop me from running, Coach. Nothing's gonna stop me from running. possibility of any hitches. It means a great deal to the Greeks to have these games revived. I hear you've been having some trouble finding runners. I always felt that the English had the finest in the world. Oh, bad timing. All our best runners are tied up in some big competition at home, the Pan Botanic Games. I do enlist half my staff at the embassy, and we only have two entries. Have you ever seen a filing clerk and a librarian run 100 meters? Can't say I have. Mr. Ambassador? Yes, uh, very good. Uh, perhaps uh, a little less passion, don't you think, Baron? Absolutely. Uh, will you inform our bandmaster of Ambassador Edgerton's reaction? And now, with your permission, Ambassador Alexander, the American theme. Joke? It definitely sounds like it, Ambassador Alexander. Mr. Demetrius, Yankee Doodle is certainly a lovely little tune, but hardly in the mood and spirit of the occasion. I'm afraid this is the only American sheet music Colonel Padrinkus was able to locate. I think you told me that an American cruiser is anchored in the harbor. Yes, the USS San Francisco. Uh, don't you think that their bandmaster could rustle up a piece that could somehow uh, convey musically what America represents, which is the whole point, isn't it? Well, that's a good idea, Baron. Not that I think we'll need the music the way things are going. There's bad bit of luck about your boys. Uh, any word on their progress? Well, I know that they caught the train to Brindisi. Uh, the question now is, will they make the connection with the steamer? You're very late. Yes, I know, I know. Are these our carriages? Right, okay. Guys. Let's go, fellas. These carriages, Robert. First carriage, yeah. Come on, fellas. Let's go. Well, where do you want me to go, coach? Ah, let's go, come on. Let's go, on the carriage. On the carriage. Come here, let's go. Get on, get on. Is this thing safe with all of us? Uh, oh, get Take this, Robert. Take that. Come on, come on. Ah, Mr. Flack, good afternoon. Good night. You have the visitors, eh? Good.
So tell me, how was the voyage? Great. Couldn't have been better. I've always loved the sea. We had one storm after another. I spent the whole trip confined to our cabin. None for me, thank you. Oh, try some, Annabella. Doesn't look too bad. I'd rather not. Not ill, are you, ma? Oh, of course not, my sweet. Simply not very hungry, that's all. It's probably the excitement of seeing you again after so long. A waiter? Waiter? Would you take this away, please? Just bring me some clear soup. Why must they drown everything in grease? They don't drown everything in grease. Well, that was positively swimming in oil. There's a difference. Olive oil is vegetable. Grease is animal fat. You know that, of course, in the slaughtering business. Whatever it was, it turns my stomach. I hope we're not going to have a fuss like this every meal. I am not making a fuss. I simply have a discriminating palate, something you wouldn't know about. And what's that supposed to mean? Only that you'll eat any swill that's put in front of you. Well, it doesn't say much for your cooking, does it, old dear? <laughs> well, isn't it nice to be back together again? You mean to tell me the United States has no national anthem? We never adopted one, officially. So what do you play at state occasions? One of two pieces. Either this. Oh, Columbia, the gem of the ocean, the home of the brave and the free, the shrine of each patriot's devotion, a world offers homage to thee. Thy mandates make heroes assemble When liberty's form stands in view Thy banners make tyranny tremble When borne by the red, white and blue Or lately they've been playing this too. Of course it has no lyrics. <laughs> Very nice, both very nice. But which one shall I use for the games? Take your pick. It was nice to have met you. Nice to have met you too, and thank you again. Obviously, there is no choice. So, make up full arrangements for the good one. I need them in the morning.
you about that. There. Now you're a credit to your regiment. But smile, for goodness sake. You look like you just lost your best friend. I think I'm going to be sick. Nonsense. On Friday, you must be a hero. But today, you are only on a parade. There's no place to hide, my boy. This is your destiny. Now take a deep breath and try to relax. Harold, here, help me. <laughs> for Australia. That chap Edwin Flack, sir. Thought he was one of ours. Isn't he running for the England team? They missed that boat. They ought to be here by now. Get them here as fast as possible. Yes, sir. Sorry, mister. Documents not in order. Not in order? What do you mean they're not in order? He says here you arrive in Athens next Thursday. This is Piraeus. Documents not in order. Now you listen to me, my good man. My boys have just come halfway across the world to get here on time. Half of them have dysentery, most of them are weak with seasickness. We haven't had a good night's sleep or a decent meal in over a week. And now that we're here, I'm damned if I'm going to let some petty-minded official little be your trouble here. What's it to you? Felix Horton, United States Consul in Athens. I'm glad to see you. Welcome to Greece. Thank you.
Let's see that again. Yeah, that's right. We pray that the immortal spirit of antiquity will give life and animation to these noble new games. After a lapse of 1,500 years, we declare this modern Olympics open. <laughs> Let the games begin! All participants in the 100, the 400, the 800 meter hits, the discus and the triple jump, you have five minutes to report to the track. Five minutes. Right, right, right. Up, 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 up. Up, hand, up, hand, up, hand. Good. Again, again, again. Mr. Graham, I am Persakis, your track host for the games. Zach, it's pleased to meet you. Is your team ready? We're just listening up now. I'm Mr. Tyler, this is Mr. Persakis. Good to meet you. Hi, Mr. Richard. Why don't you come this way and meet some of the others? Sumner and John Payne, this is our host of the Olympic Games. Just want to wish you luck out there, Skip. I don't want anything from you, Connolly. Just stay away from me. Good luck. Thanks a lot, James. Good luck. Thanks, Jamie.
I'm supporting the American team, aren't you? You sure are. Where uh, did you get this new starting position? It's an American invention. What do you call it? Well, that's a famous four-point hammer. We thought everybody knew that. Four-point hammer? <laughs> Must remember that. <laughs> It's the triple jumps, the finals. Finals? No elimination first? Not for this event. Each man will have one try only. This is it, then. Better make it good. Good luck, lad. Next jump is the Dufry of France. appropriate than the first one, but uh, I don't know if it'll catch on. What's that tune they're playing? Sounds Greek to me. <laughs> first Olympic champion in 1,500 years. Dean Elliott tried to keep him from coming. you.
next event is the first qualifying heat of the 800 meter race. Gentlemen, take your mark. Get set. The king, of course. Oh. Of course. Gentlemen, please take your mark. Get set. Our national heroes, they can throw better than 90 feet. Ah, they have nothing to worry about. Jared's best throw is maybe 75 feet. Perhaps that is for the best. This is one event a Greek must win. It is a matter of national pride. Of the United States. Got it. 
Well, what have you there? Well, this is my disc cassette. I'm afraid we can't allow you to use that, Mr. Garrett. But you'll have to use the official discs, like all the others. So I don't think that's fair. Those are the rules, Mr. Garrett. I'm afraid you'll have to. So I don't think that's fair. What's going on? Looks like there's some trouble about his discs. Go this way. You want me to throw this? I'm afraid you'll have to. Yes, sir. If you insist. My God, it looks half the size. It weighs approximately two kilos, about four of your pounds, I believe. It is half the size. Next, Mr. Garrett of the United States. something you must do all alone by yourself and for yourself and once you've achieved it no one can ever take it away from you something to say to the Greek people. I, uh, I, uh, Mr. Garrett, I need something to print about you. I'll tell you what to print. Say Alexander the Great once conquered Greece. But today that young man conquered the world and again put the Greeks to shame. I know it's a great honor, but I can't help feeling that I only won by a fluke. The Greeks were terribly disappointed. They wanted to win the discus, the shot put, and the marathon more than anything. Of course, Mr. Graham keeps reminding me that that's what competition is all about, winning. But somehow, as I sit here looking at my medal, I get the uneasy feeling that winning isn't everything. I can think of other things that seem more important to me now.
Just coming through. Well, Mr. Bogartis? Well, I can't make heads or tails of it, but I'll give it to you just as it came through. First day, Lane, Burke, Curtis, Jameson qualify for 100-meter final stop. Jameson, Lane, Burke qualify 400-meter final stop. Blake qualifies 800-meter finals stop. Connolly wins first gold medal 1,500 years for triple jump stop. Garrett wins second gold medal discus stop. Athens golden stop. Graham, does that uh, make any sense to you? It's a mystery to me, Mr. Bogartis. It's a mystery to me. God bless them. Our boys, William. Our boys. In the first heat of the 110 meter hurdles are Mr. Curtis and Mr. Hoyt of the United States, Mr. Dufari of France, Gentlemen, and take Mr. Your marks. Andreo of Greece. Get set. if I'm losing you. Losing me? That's impossible. When you're a hero, you belong to them. To all those people. Never. I'll always be yours. So, ha! This is a famous Alenia. Mm, now I can see why a man can run his heart off for a place like this. Leave her alone, Sergeant. Can't you see you're embarrassing her? Embarrassing her? Oh. I tell you, my pretty child, if this lovesick ass of yours wins the marathon, we will build a monument to you. Two monuments, perhaps one in every city. Eh? You will be as famous as Ellen of Troy. 
The face has won a marathon. <laughs> I mustn't count so much on my winning, Sergeant. What if I should lose? Don't talk such nonsense. Of course you're going to win. There is no man who can match my boy's endurance. You turn the face when you boast like that. I defy them to prove me wrong. Even the fates know that my son has the wings of Hermes on his heels. There'll be many, many of us running, Father. All good men. I say, there is a man who can beat you. You may be wrong. There is the American, the one who won the discourse yesterday. He's good, very good. The next event will be the broad jump final. First is Mr. Halko Kondilis of Greece. Mr. Connolly of the United States. President Cleveland would become a sports enthusiast after all. Maybe. Meter finals. Mr. Gentlemen, take your mark. of the United States. Also, Mr. Elliot of Great Britain and Mr. Le Monsieur of France. Get set.
White House will never believe this. But you Americans are winning everything. I suppose we should be delighted for our cousins across the pond, but it's damned embarrassing. So we have won two gold medals in lawn tennis, sir. Lawn tennis? Oh, don't sneer, Edwin. It's a fine sport. The track and field events are the only ones that count. Everyone knows that. Well, there may be hope yet, sir. The 1,500-meter finals are next. Major event. Flack is running. Oh. The Australian chap. Take your marks. Oh, Greece. Get set. young man in my office tomorrow before the game. Yes, sir. The next event will be the shot put final. His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Konstantin, will officiate. First up, Mr. Ruskos of Greece. Mr. Oh! 
Nobody can beat this guy, not even the Greeks. Does that mean you're not going back to Oxford? I haven't decided yet. I'm still... But it was all settled. You were going to study law, then come home and set up a practice. Things have changed, man. Changed? I don't know what you mean. Nothing's changed. Well, I've changed. Things have moved on. I'm not the same person that I was when I left home two years ago. I've got to rethink my future. Annabella, this is hardly the place. This is important, Harold. Could affect his whole life. Aileen McGovern. Aileen McGovern? Well, she's your fiancé, Edwin. He hasn't actually asked for a hand as yet. Well, it's certainly his intention. His or yours, Mrs. Flack? Edwin? Well, I'm, 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 I'm not sure anymore, ma. A lovely girl like that. One of the finest families in Melbourne. I can't imagine what's got into you. He's learning to think for himself. Oh, I'm sure it's all the same to you. The boy throws away his future. He'd probably be content if he married a barmaid, so long as she was a good breeder. Mother, please. I'm not content to see him manipulated into a marriage he doesn't want. Pa, can we please discuss this later? You mean you haven't been trying to manipulate him all these years into the meatpacking business with you? Some kind of future that'd be. If it was good enough for my father and it's good enough for me, then it's then good it's... enough for my son. Will you ever stop repeating that mindless slogan? Will you show a little respect for my trade? Respect? I've lived with a stench too long. Stop it! Why don't you just give it a rest? You've been using me to get at one another all my life. If this is what you came over here for, I wish you'd both just go back to Australia. Edwin? Let him go. I never meant the boy any harm. Talk to him, Harold. Bring him back. If it's not too late. I'm sorry, lad. Why do you put up with it, Pa? Because I love her. And I know, in her own way, she loves me. Oh, I... I know it doesn't show. At least, not much anymore. But there were some good times. Some great times. I only wish you could have known her then. Well, what made her change? Well, your mother had a lot of disappointments in her life. She was brought up with grand expectations. Too great for me to fulfill, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm a simple man, a rough man. Not at all what she had in mind, then I'm why sure. why did she marry you? I fancy she was blinded by love. But love wasn't enough. Couldn't make all her dreams come true. Couldn't make me any more than the local butcher. And you came along. The only thing in her life that's never been a disappointment to her. Don't you see, son? You're her great chance. The chance to make her dreams come true. And what about my dreams? Well, she's your mother. I suspect she'll be just as glad if your dreams come true instead. So go to it, lad. Live your life. She won't approve. Oh, yes. Like me, she'll come to realize no one can live your life for you. God, why do I need to win so badly? Show the world who you are. I don't even know who I am. Why... Why aren't you the lad from Australia no one had heard of before yesterday? What's his name? Flack? And when asked for a comment after winning the gold medal for the discus, Mr. Garrett said, Alexander the Great once conquered Greece. Today I conquered the world and put the Greeks to shame again. 
I'm afraid it's been reprinted in all the major European and American newspapers. I never... I, n I didn't... We know, Robert. We know. Mr. Garrett, the man who wrote this is an irresponsible idiot. I apologize on behalf of my fellow Greeks. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll go down to the newspaper office and demand a complete retraction. Please excuse me. I need some air. Let him be, Skip. It's late. Tomorrow's a rough day. Let's all get some sleep. Thank you, Mr. Prasakis. Good night, Jamie. 23. What happened to Connolly's hand? He smashed it into a concrete wall when you lost out to Flack. 31. He still feels pretty bad about your leg. You're not making it any easier on him. Why should I? You behave as though he did it on purpose. You know, Skip, I'm disappointed in you. Frankly, I thought you were made of better stuff. 36, please. you, is it? Look, I'm in no mood for another go-around with you, so if you don't mind, uh, yeah. Well, I, was one, I was wondering, I thought you might like to join me. What's that? It's called Uzo. It's an old-fashioned remedy. Remedy for what? Well, I say it's a guaranteed painkiller. <laughs> I heard about your hand. So I figured maybe we could both use a healthy bolt, huh? <laughs> you know, it's like my Uncle Mike used to say. Never spit in the eye of a man who's offering you a free drink until after, until after you've had the drink. I'd like to see you, Uncle Mike. Yeah, well, you will. I've got some glasses over here. Damn it all, Flack. There's such a thing as loyalty, you know. Loyalty, sir. Well, after all, you're only here because the London Athletic Club's footing the bill. That should count for something, man. I'm very grateful to them, of course. Well, you've a fine way of showing it. I wear their emblem on my tunic, as we agreed. But that's all we agreed. Look here, my boy. Great Britain needs a winner. We've had a damn poor showing so far. You know as well as I, England's got the finest runners in the world. If they'd been here, we'd have had our share of those gold medals by George, and then some. The irony is, they were all kept at home for the ruddy Pan-Britannic games. And now, Damn thing's been cancelled. Cancelled? Can you imagine? Of course. It's too late to get any of our best men here in time. It's damn frustrating. I might have been in the same predicament myself. I qualified for the Pan Britannic Games. Why didn't you participate? The Oxford team didn't want me, sir. They said it was only for Englishmen. Well, then. Well, here's your chance. Run for us in the 800 metre this afternoon and you can win for England. That will show them. I'm afraid it's impossible, sir. I'm asking you as a personal favour to me, Flack. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't. I should think you'd consider it an honour to run for England. An honour? Let me set you straight about something, Mr. Ambassador. My grandfather was a pommy. That's what's carved on his tombstone. P-O-M-E. Prisoner of Mother England. He was sent to Australia as a convict, a criminal because he was in debt. When the penal system was finally abolished, he worked hard and became a respected member of the community, owner of the biggest meatpacking company in Victoria. My father runs the business today. Eventually, I'll take over from him, I imagine. What I'm saying, sir, is that Australia is my country. I consider it an honour to run for her. Quite frankly, I don't give a damn for England, or for most of the English. You Aussies are a cocky lot. It must be something in the beer, sir. Next is the 800 meter final. The competitors are Mr. Dini of Hungary. Gentlemen, Mr. take Le your mark. Mr. of France. Mr. Blake of the United States. Mr. Flack of Australia. Mr. Schmidt of Germany and Mr. Fitzis of Greece. Get set.
He won. Who was it? Close. It was close. He won. Blake. We got a decision. Split decision. Give it to us. The judges have ruled that the winner of the 800 meter final is Mr. Flack of Australia. Mrs. Flack. And you, Mr. Flack. Haven't done too badly after all, have you? Sumner, which of us wins this one? I don't mean to be churlish, John. Well, you've already won your gold medal. Say no more, Sumner. Say no more. Hey, next competitor, Mr. John Payne of the United States. You may commence firing. Check this call, please. Gentlemen, take your marks. Good luck, Artie. Show them what you're made out of. I don't need luck, coach. Better boy. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Pace. Get set.
Mr. Garrett of the United States. Thanks for your patience. High jump, Clark first, Connolly second, Garrett third. Stop. Broad jump, Clark first, Connolly second, Garrett third. Stop. 400 meter race, Burke first, Jameson second, Lane third. Stop. Shot put, Garrett wins second gold medal. Stop. 1500 meter race, Blake second. Stop. 25 meter revolvers, John Payne first, Sumner Payne second. Stop. 30 meter revolvers, Sumner Payne first, John Payne, second, stop. 800 meter race, Blake, second by hair, stop. Swimmer, down drain, stop. <laughs> Tomorrow, last day, stop. Team Delirious, stop. Hope you are same, stop. Graham! Three ah! cheers for Dr. Sloan! I'll second that! Hip, hip, Come in. Am I disturbing you? Oh, Edwin. Shouldn't you be getting ready to leave for Marathon? I wanted to talk to you about something before I left. Where's Pa? He's, uh, gone down to see the desk clerk about our travel arrangements. Probably catch him in the lobby. Actually, it was, uh, you I wanted to talk to. I've decided not to go back to Oxford after all. I'm going home. And I'll finish off at Trinity College. come to a decision. You must be very relieved. You mean you don't mind? If it's what you want, it's what I want. I can't tell you how pleased I am to hear you say that. Actually, I've made some very foolish mistakes in the past, Edwin. Particularly, I'm ashamed to say, where you're concerned. No, you don't have to. Please. I want you to know I've turned over a new leaf. Now, at my age, that may be difficult, but I'm... I'm determined to succeed. That much I owe you. Well, I've never known you not to succeed. Especially when you put your mind to a thing. Lucky for me, I have your father. He's a very wise and patient man. Just beginning to learn that. Yes, I'm I. I suppose this means we'll be travelling back to Australia together. Well, actually, I'm afraid you were making the voyage home by yourself. What's that? Well, you see, when we leave here, your father and I are going to England. England? On our second honeymoon. Well, what do you know about that? Uh, 
And the reporter regrets any embarrassment he has caused Mr. Garrett as a result. There, you see, Robert, a complete uh, retraction. Wait, wait, there's more. I'm afraid, Robert, like it or not, you have an unshakable admirer in this fool Culermo. <laughs> <laughs> However, in this reporter's humble opinion, Mr. Garrett should have made the remarks attributed to him. He has conquered the world, and he has put the Greeks to shame. Here, here. Well, I certainly hope the Greeks don't think I feel that way. If they thought I was boasting No about one this. thinks you were boasting, Robert. You won those medals fair and square, didn't he, fellas? We did. Yeah. Besides, we Greeks still have a chance to win the marathon. Although, to tell you the truth, most bets are on you and the Greek boy, Spiros Lewis. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. Hey. Blake Garrett, the wagons are ready and waiting. You're off to the marathon. Let's go. Let's go, you guys. Let's go. 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 Uh, do you think you could have a bicycle waiting out front first thing in the morning? Nice evening. These are wagons down here? Yes, Mr. Graham. Have you other wagons down there? Good luck, Skip. Thank this you. is your wagon over here. Good, steady pace. Good luck, Skip. Good luck, Skip. You Good can luck, no distance at all. Robert, bring us back some more gold from the mountains. If I can carry any, I will. Good luck, Robert. I'll be waiting for you at the end of that tunnel. I'll get there as soon as I can, Coach. Good luck, Skip. Goodbye. I'll see you later. Certainly. Certainly. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good luck, Skip. Good luck, Skip! Good luck, Skip! Good luck, Skip! Keep a nice, even pace! Mr. Pasakis, what's all that? It's the Greek boy I mentioned, the shepherd from Marusi named Spiridon Lewis. That's right. an old folk song. Out of a barren land, out of a dead land, one great one grows. The hope of this. How about you? Are you ready for this? I think uh, 40 kilometers is more than anyone's going to be able to cope with. The miles about my limit after that, I'm finished. These Greeks here have been in training for this race a long time. They mean business. Luis. Spiros Luis. Garrett. Robert Garrett? Yeah. Ah, first of all, this name is all the English now. What does he say? He says your name is very well known to all the Greeks now. Oh, uh, um, please tell him that I, I said nothing of the things that were in the newspaper. None of that was... He would not know anything about that. He can't read nor write. First of all, he's very sympathetic. But he says he sympathizes with you. He sympathizes with me? Why? Yadi? Ε, έχει πει ότι το να νικάς είναι σαν να πηθαίνεις και να πηγαίνεις στον παράδεισο. Είναι, συ... ε, είναι συγχρόνος θαυμάσιο και τρομερό. Ε, τρομερό γιατί πρέπει να το κάνεις μόνος και θαυμάσιο επειδή κερδίζεις την αιώνια ζωή. Είναι σαν να winning must be like dying and going to heaven. Both frightening and beautiful. Frightening because you must go through it alone. 
And beautiful because it gives you eternal life. Tineonia Zoe. Tineonia Zoe. Tineonia Zoe. Eternal life. Tineonia Zoe. for a man with a free day? Coming to the stadium? No, I got a little debt to settle today. Oh, yes? Yeah. Jeff Resto. Thanks. See you later, all right? All right. You sure you wouldn't rather come to the stadium? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Mr. Black, Mr. Gay, good morning. Good day for the marathon. Yeah, good day. Yes, good luck. take their religion very seriously, Mr. Gallant. He's been praying like this all night. I watched him from here till midnight. And when I came back at dawn, he was still here. When that young man runs today, Mr. Garrett, he won't be running merely for himself. He will be running for all Greeks like him. For all those who share with him the poverty, the ignorance, the hopelessness that is a peasant's life. In his heart, he understands. He will be carrying with him their hopes and their dreams when he enters that stadium today. For an illiterate shepherd, Mr. Garrett, that is a terrifying burden. So he prays for strength. I almost envy him. Listen to them, they're laughing. Those are the rules, Mr. Tyler. The bar must start at three feet and be raised one inch after every jump, until all but one man has been eliminated. Oh, but this is ridiculous. It sure is. You're not required to start jumping until you think it's at a height you wish to try. You wait. Exactly 24 miles, 1,500 yards from here to the Panathinaik Stadium in Athens. When you reach the stadium, you will make a turn of the outer perimeter before you enter and go to the finish line. Villages along the route have set out drinks and refreshments for the runners. You are welcome to help yourselves. Medical attention will be available for those who require it in wagons, traveling in front of the runners and out the rear. And now, if you will all take your positions. Riding twos on this path, please.
Ramsey. Stop it? Yes. Thanks. What is this, boy? It's great. Good on you, mate. Thanks a lot. Gentlemen, you must start jumping now or withdraw. But it's not high enough. There are only the two of you left. Well, look, can we move the bar up a bit? I'm afraid that's impossible. The rules, you see. We know, we know. One inch at a time. We have just received word that the marathon runners have passed through the village of Pikermi. <laughs> Mr. Blake of the United States is in the lead. Take your marks. Get set. Start growing shrubbery pretty soon, Tommy. Thanks, Eddie. I kind of like the sound 
of it. The Burke Olympiad. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Hardly a man is still alive who remembers that famous day and year. Sorry, me skip, but alas, I fear that Paul is the best we can do for you here. But if you should win this endless race, we'll drown you in Uzo by the case and prop you up and let them cheer and name you the biggest drunk of the year. Come on, skip. Here we go. This is, there's a turn coming up here. Take this turn right here. I'm sorry, Mr. Hart, you cannot leave one event for another, you know. But if I don't leave, I can't run the hurdles. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do about it. This is unbelievable. Oh. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm As I was hurdles. telling you, there is nothing. Excuse me. What's the problem? I'm sorry, Mr. Garn. It is now Mr. Tyler's turn. If Mr. Hoyt is not here to take his turn after that, Mr. Tyler will win by default. When does Mr. Tyler have to make his jump? As soon as he's ready. Well, Tyler, you ready? Uh, no, sir, no. I've done something to my... Thanks, Coach. This man should not be competing. I quite agree, Baron. The man's a bloody nincompoop. Still, beggars can't be choosers. He is the only professional on our team. These games are for amateurs. Making money should never intrude on the Olympic idea. Oh, you mean the perfect panacea for a troubled world, the selfless pursuit of lofty ideals and so forth and so on. Yes. Yes. Two weeks. Two little weeks every four years. Not too much to ask, is it? Makes sense.
congratulations, Tommy. Thanks. Uh, can you hold these for me? <laughs> yeah, sure. Only a silver? Hardly worth waiting for. Well, I still got one chance to get a gold. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Me? Thus at the flaming forge of life our fortunes must be wrought. Thus at the sounding anvil shaped each burning deed and thought. Come on. Come on, Skip! Uh, uh. Skip! You gotta get up. Skip, you gotta get up. Now, come on now, the meter. Come on. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. All right. Now, listen to the meter. Thus at the flaming forge. Here we go. Here we go, Skip. Thus at the flaming forge of life our fortunes must be wrought. Watch that turn. Thus at the sounding anvil shaped each burning deed and thought. Come on, Skip. You're looking good now. Let's go. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, the mighty man, is he. I'm right here, Skip. Keep going. Keep going. And win! We're at the end, Skip. Remember the day we had to fight? You remember that?
Congratulations. Oh, sir, congratulations really belong to you. Robert Garrett, I'm going to tell you the truth. I do feel like one of you, an athlete in the stadium after the longest, toughest race, elated and exhausted. <laughs> and you've won. 
Michael.
mother. <laughs> you look wonderful. Oh, so do you. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Robert. So very proud. That makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> mother. You remember Kathy, Catherine Baker? Hello, Mrs. Garrett. Oh, yes, of course. How, how lovely to see you again. I've asked Kathy to be my wife. She's accepted. Robert, I told you this wasn't the time. We want to be married as soon as possible. All we need is your blessing. Well, how can I refuse? I only want your happiness. I make it a policy never to resist the inevitable. And looking at you both, I can see that this is inevitable. Bless you, bless you both. <laughs> I do it again for half the pay. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Graham, because I received a tele... The... What's going on? Gentlemen, what is going on? what your remarkable achievements have accomplished. Only this morning, I received this telegram from the Baron de Coubertin, the gentleman who's responsible for reviving these games in the first place. He has appointed me a permanent member of the International Olympics Committee, and I am here, and I am here required to begin recruiting a team for the next Olympics, Paris 1900. Will there be women in the next Olympics, William? Women! If I have anything to say, they will. We shall be there. So, my dear, dear friends, you seem to have started something. May it never end. <laughs> Everybody, please, stay as you are. Please. Skookalaki. I want a picture of the victorious team for my newspaper. Is that all right, Jim? Come around. Yeah, Come around. One more photograph. One more. <laughs> How's this, sir? It's beautiful. Never have I seen a picture so beautiful. Dr. William Milligan Sloan retained his seat on the International Olympic Committee and organized the 1912 Stockholm Games. Although he was unable to keep his promise to Madame Schumann establishing the participation of women in the Olympic Games until 1928. Impressed with the symbolism of the first marathon, John Graham and the Boston Athletic Association organized the first Boston Marathon in 1897. It has been run every year since. Robert Garrett finished his Princeton days as president of his class. A successful banker, he never lost his interest in education, and many of his concepts are still part of the school curriculum all over America. James Brendan Connolly became a novelist, ironically specializing in tales of the sea. He finally returned to Harvard University 40 years later and was presented with an honorary degree. The event was organized by his lifelong friend. Charles Arthur Blake, who became a respected Boston insurance executive and raised a large family. He never lost his love of poetry and published many verses of his own. Edwin Flack returned to Australia where he completed his education, married and raised a family, and took over the family meatpacking business. Spiridon Luis finished his army service, returned to his village and married Eleni and had three sons. He refused to accept the 100,000 drachmas prize money and never ran another race. To this day, he remains a symbol of national pride. The inscription on his gravestone reads, Blessed by the gods, a hero of Greece. 
Baron Pierre de Coubertin lived to see the modern Olympics become a permanent tradition. On his deathbed, he made a strange request. His heart was to be buried in ancient Olympia. Now, every fourth year, when the athletes of the world join together in peaceful competition, his spirit lives on.